Good morning, cultists! In our previous episode, we ended things off after being asked by some random dude to help retrieve an heirloom from the attic of the old eel. The problem is, the room is currently being rented so I can't access it, so I think we might have to either come back later or maybe find some way upstairs. I don't know. In any case, we also leveled up, so I'm going to need to spend some of my skills and whatnot because I can't get out of the screen. Yeah. Alright, well, I think a cult has been quite useful, so maybe we should put a point there? Or should we go with psychology? Hmm. You know what? Let's go with psychology. And maybe a point into speechcraft or a cult. I guess a cult is more important for us, because that is kind of our background. Sure. But, I don't know. Hmm, you know what? Just go for a cult, that's fine. We can bring up speechcraft and all the other stuff up later. Uh, we can now pick a perk. Hagler will give us better prices from vendors. Um, I don't know if... Hmm, spellcraft. I kind of get the feeling that as a cultist, I'll be using a lot of spellcraft stuff. So maybe I should go for that? You know what? I'm gonna go with Hagler. Yeah, I think that's good. Hopefully. Knock on wood. Oh! And we also get to level him up too. Oh no, he's already got a thing in a cult. Then how about a skill in stealth and one in melee? Sure. So he's got shred. Outsider's basic attacks have a chance to bleed the target and hard bitten, so he has mental resistance. Wisdom of the centuries increases spellcraft, uh, minimum and maximum spell damage by one, and lowers maximum health by three. Maximum health by three? Really? Or Wrath of Isolation, and lowers maximum sanity by three. Hmm. Let's go with... I don't know if he's meant to be more of a... Like, melee fighter or a... Spellcaster. You know what, let's go for Wrath of Isolation. Sure. Fantastic. Oh! Shoot, I totally didn't look up the, um, short story that I'm thinking that this guy's based off. Darn it. Ah, I should've looked it up. I completely forgot. My bad. My bad. Alright, so we need to also go to the Bank of the Lunatics. We've already learned about this thing. Hmm. So why isn't it crossed out? Oh yeah, Cornelius' pocket watch from the old eagle attic. I don't know if there's a way up there right now. No. Okay, well let's talk to this homeless man. You see a withered old man sitting bent over one of the tables. He appears to be in the midst of a heated argument with his bag. The fiery light in his yellowish eyes con contrasts sharply with the with his weary physique. I get it, I get it. Cut it out, I said. Dawkins, I tell you one last time, if I ever hear your bloody voice again, I'll break your damn piss pot of a bottle. You hear me? All of you. The old man suddenly turns to you and his fiery gaze meets yours. You're early, cabin boy. Good. Sit down and drink some ale with me. Um... Cabin boy? I think you've mistaken me for someone else. Have I? Oh, perhaps we're all in a ship. A damn ship sailing through the black forsaken waters, eh? And that may make you cabin boy, all right. He turns to his bag. What do you say me? Say to me, you foul mouth horse spawn? The old man turns to you again. Ah, uh, yes, the ship. Uh, can its name be... Arkham? He smiles a toothless smile. Perhaps there's wisdom in your words. He's not with you again. Long, Tom, just when I thought you came to your bloody senses. No, I'll be sitting here drinking my ale or whatever this horse piss is. He registers your presence again. What do you say, cabin boy? What are you talking to? What's in the bag? You mean what's... What, you mean in my bag here? No one of importance to you, just the low-life scum of the sea. None's a lot like me. He hears something from the bag which upsets him, as far as you can tell. 
How dare you, you horn swoggling bastard? Noddens? And upon Dolphin's back on a vast crenellate shell wherein rode the Grey Noddens, Lord of the Great Abyss. You'll learn more about him in your time on deck, cabin boy. You may even serve the needs of the gods, the god of the great deep, like I do. Noddens is like those cold, tyrannical, unfeeling gods that rule the realms below. A realm now. He finds purpose in mortals, although rarely. Shut your trap, Peters. Uh, hmm. Okay. I guess we'll just leave. I better go. Yeah, goodbye. A sudden vigilance burns in the old man's eyes. Tommy then, cabin boy, before you leave, why do you follow the man who sails the whirlpools of reality? You mean the dismal man? Dismal? Yes, that's bloody fitting. Now answer me question, cabin boy. His voice, his voice has taken on a cold and intimidating tone. I believe he'll have answers to this mystery. He may have a hand in all this if he... And if he does, he'll pay. I don't have anything better to do. I'd like to join him. I don't want to spend the rest of my days here. I don't know. I have a, feel a strong urge to follow him. Hmm. I guess the answer to the mystery is more of the esoteric thing to say. Yeah, I don't know if joining him... That sounds more nihilistic. But, uh... Hmm. You know what? Maybe I'll try this. I'd like to join him. He burst into laughter, revealing what remains of his rotten yellow teeth. That was good, cabin boy. That was good. He suddenly bends down to his bag. What? Peter's found another one. Good boy. All right. You'll have what you want, then. Uh, what you want when? Whenever I decide to leave this rat hole of a tavern, of course. No one here is going anywhere. Hmm, who's this lady? See a beautiful young woman with short hair smoking a cigarette? There's a daring, carefree quality about her which is pretty rare in this town, especially these days. I can see her glancing towards this direction, sir. Perhaps we shall turn this into a conversation? May I offer you a drink? Hmm, the pleasure is all mine, miss. Why? Are you among those who believe that only men can buy drinks to women? Um, of course not. Then enjoy your glass. She pours the glass of whiskey and continues. Let's consider this, consider this, consider this the rehearsal and start from the beginning. May I learn your name? I'm Clara Bell. You'd have probably known my name if things went right for once in my life. I was an actress. Heard the movie Hollow Hearts? Uh, no, sorry. Not a surprise. It was never released. Well, it's a good thing I didn't say yes and lie to that. Or lie about that. The critics saw it, though. I remember uh, one of them, Bill Hunts, was appro approaching me after a special meeting, or after the special screening, telling me, You've got it, Clara. You've got a real star, ma you're a real star material. No need to say that he was drunk and uh, flirty as a male baboon in mating season. Whatever. Uh, whatever. Later, I had, to, I had time to think about what he has said to me about this whole star material thing. You know, I have an eternity to reflect upon these things. Drinks from her whiskey. Star material. Why should I become material after all? Hmm, I see your point. I mean, I wanted to be an artist and defeat that notion in the first place. But you have to fit somewhere in there. I mean, your world. Be a good wife or be good fun. Oh, you're better than that? Be a good investment. All my life I wanted to be there. On the magazines, on the silver screen, all that jazz. But you know, sometimes I can't help thinking that this, looks to the gloom of the outsider world, may actually be the better alternative. Because I would never have quit long a bit, quit going far for the top myself. Hmm, seems you're trying hard to be optimistic. You know what's best for you. Thanks for your safe answer. Come on, this is the end of the world. You can be more sincere, darling. What are you doing in Arkham? Ah, I really wish I knew. It's a mystery to me as well. I was waiting for the release of Hollow Hearts at a hotel in LA when Bernie called. My manager. This is of course Bernie Sanders. Bernie wanted to meet wanted me to meet in a private funder in Arkham. So I hastily came to this forsaken place. I couldn't afford refusing such a such things, you know. When I arrived at the train station, Bernie was nowhere to be found. 
He was supposed to meet me there, but he never came. Mmm... Did you see Bernie later? No, never. Everything before the Black Day seems blurry now. Did he really call me that day or was it a dream? Did he ever arrive in Arkham? Well, what did you do next? I was too tired and confused. I decided to wait for Bernie here in Arkham for a few days, so I headed to the Essex Hotel. Who could have said that it would be my new home for the rest of my life? So you can still afford staying there. Dollar becoming obsolete and all. Let's just say I've met the right people. You know, it was never really about money. About the money. Money is just another way to display power. Survive my childhood and you'll know. What about your childhood? Oh, you're my psychiatrist now? Forget it. Skeletons are best left in the closet. Hmm. I guess my point in um, psychology didn't really help much. And because of my mild exhaustion, my attributes are going down. Who's this guy? And this is, uh... Yeah, this is Eduardo. What are you doing in Arkham? Ah, it is a long one. Maybe you can buy me a drink uh, later, and I shall share it with you, senor. Eduardo Canella goes to America. Small fisherman's son becomes big and rich. He smiles bitterly. Hasn't happened yet. I guess that dream is over. Eduardo silently looks, uh, looks away. Hmm... I don't know if I need him for a fight, but um, maybe we'll come back to him later. I'm really hoping that I don't need him to get into the um, ruined bank or whatever. And of course, my friend's just been waiting outside the whole time. Uh, I, isn't there a campfire nearby that I can use? Because I am suffering from exhaustion. So it would be nice to get some rest, I think. Hmm. I'm a little concerned, not gonna lie. Now I know there's a campfire in the corner area here. Yeah. Do I need anything to actually rest, or can I just, I guess, do whatever whenever? I guess we'll try. Uh, so... Reconnaissance Psychological Treatment for the Outsider. Oh, to restore his sanity. Right. Or should we go for medical treatment? Hmm... Sanity... Benefits zero health. Okay. Medical research, medical treatment. I do want to see... Oh, unlocks new formulas. Oh, he can do stuff too. Okay. Uh, then let's have you treat yourself. And for Brosi, we'll do the medical research of raw opium. Why can I not select it? What's going on? Sure. I think it's just maybe a little uh, bugged. There we go. And then you can go for the medical treatment on yourself. And let's do some psychological treatment for the outsider. Sure. And also do some medical research. Can we both research um, opium? Maybe we should just go for um, regular medical research then. Sure. Oh, so I think I understand what the whole... Whoa! That's Lovecraft! Though you're not exactly acquainted with your immediate surroundings here in this desolate urban setting, you don't feel like a stranger either. Is this Arkham? Perhaps a forgotten corner of which you've never seen? Amidst the Cimmerian stillness, there's a sta there stands a forlorn figure, barely present, but inescapably real. He seemed to be walking towards a certain house along the street before stopping to look at you. This place is alien, yet almost familiar. Hmm. His aloofness is in contrast with his contemplative eyes, under which you glimpse a sea of wonder. Isn't that the heart of the matter? To be somewhere foreign? To escape? If I must form a conjecture, a strong desire must have conducted to... a uh, conduced to the peculiar circumstances of our meeting. Looks at you attentively with unblinking eyes. You're a wanderer, like me perhaps. The timbre of his voice consists of sublime overtones. Why would you be here if you weren't? Hmm... What is it that brought us together? 
it seems our paths have crossed in this vast realm lying beneath the uh, prosiness of the conscious world. As for your question, I am just another lost passenger, so don't expect all the answers from me. Broodingly. But the real question revolves around you, doesn't it? Perhaps you've been com compelled to seek a memory which isn't yours at all. His eyes darken. You emanate a tragic aura, source of, source of which is most dire. What's behind that door? A brief pause and his definite answer cuts right through the this tension of Stygian abstractness. Inspiration. Know this, Wanderer. There will be a price to pay when you have no option but to cling to a vision's brim with unutterable inutter horrors in order to procure your only means of subsistence, however maddening they may be. Hmm. Tell me who you are, I must know. That sounds poetic. Are you an artist, perhaps? I don't understand. Can you please elaborate? That sounds poetic. I won't grant an answer that easily. Knowledge of someone is a powerful thing, and this premise applies even in dreams. But I'll offer you a chance since you've intruded my fantasy. I'll tell you of my journeys, and you will tell me who I am. In a frigid by, but lyrical tone, refraining from the pageantry of the mundane, a boy shall wander into the path of prophecy. Refraining from the pageantry of the mundane, a boy shall wander into the path of prophecy. Nebulous is the truth of all things future and past, dwelling beyond the serpent's lair for none but him to see. Only the forbidden he shall there thereafter seek, lurking in the labyrinth so forgotten and forlorn. Plagued will be those upon whom he shall touch, uh, hailed by the oblivion which they will have forborne. Carried away to his fantasy and wings eternal, a toilsome quest he shall embark upon so sedulously. Resplendence of his dream, however, is not to remain, thus the search for the silver key must begin duly. Exalted he will be in the deathless continuum, wild and free, resigning from the world to embrace all that was and ever will be. Answer me then, wonder, who am I? Hmm... Honestly, I mean, I don't know, but he did reference that silver key of Solomon. I have no answer. His face assumes an unfavorable ex expression. To walk the dreamlands, you, ha you should be able to read the signs that lie beyond what is suggested to you. It seems that you are not endowed with such a capability. Oh no! Shit, the apparition, uh, blacker than the... Then the fathomless, uncharted gulfs of spatial remoteness descends fiendishly upon you. Uh, try to fight the Night Terror. I do have some will, so let's go for it. You're too feeble and the blackest of terrors ravenously consumes you. But soon the terror, having satiated itself, recedes as, as, as insidiously as it encroached. The stranger has a look of pity on his face. You don't have the will of a true wanderer, but since you have come this far, you will hear my name. My name of is Randolph Carter. Oh shit! This is the guy that uh, that that's being looked for by his wife. Diverts his gaze to the dulcome skies. Now, if you excuse me, I must cover a long way to eternity. Randolph Carter. I guess I met your wife. She's looking all over for you. And he's just going away. Oh shit! And I lost sanity from this. Oh, look at that! So gained 5 sanity after some rest, made a discovery in medical research, so we can now make laudanum shots. Treated outsider for sanity, so his sanity has recovered a little bit. Visited a strange place in your dreams. Gained 4 sanity and health after uh, rest. Powdered cocaine! Fantastic! So we seem to be in good spirits at least. So, we met Randolph Carter. Now we need to speak to Carter's wife. Uh, I met an unusually stylish young woman in French Hill, who had a dark mystique about her. She asked me whether I'd seen her husband, going by the name uh, Randolph Carter, a slender, long-faced man, was her words. I'll be sure to keep that in mind in case I run across him. As if by... As if it was somehow fore, foreordained, 
I met an elusive individual in the secluded dreamscape I visited last night where he granted me his name, Randolph Carter. I recall that the lady I met in French Hill was looking for him. If I can find her, perhaps I should tell her about this confounding experience. Yeah, sure. Sure thing. Okay, um... Question, should we go back to the old eel to try to access the attic? Maybe we should do that before it gets too late or something. I don't know if there is even a day or night time or something. Shit, so now I'm kind of like going away from whole, the whole, um... Oh, I guess he won't uh, get in there. Right. I'm kind of like detracting myself from the whole, uh, oh, there she is. From the whole, um, other thing. I need to rest in the attic. Oh, he can't still. All right. Find Sonya, showing a Marino a picture and asking in a distressed voice whether he's seen a man named Randolph Carter. Try to have a squint eye glance at the picture being shown by the woman. The dashing but otherwise thin-lipped and pale gentleman in the picture is definitely the man you saw in your dream. Mmm. Excuse me, miss, but I met this Randolph Carter. Yeah. You have? Oh, please do tell. Her words are cut off by an impertinent Marino. A senora of high standards such as yourself shouldn't pay attention to a man who can barely pay for my services. The know-it-all uh, here, pro the pr know-it-all here probably wants to squeeze you, that's all. It's a rude way to interrupt a Marino, uh, Lady Marino. Now, miss, try to lie a, a little harder, Marino, and even you might just believe it. Shall we go somewhere a little less distracting, miss? Mm, I feel like she's a little, um... Maybe suspicious, so... Yeah, let's do this. Ignoring you, Marino interrupts yet again. Well, um, sorry, senora. Allow me to serve you our finest liquor. Pours whiskey from the bottle. His face is very familiar, actually. Let me look at the picture again. Filling her glass, Marino throws you a mean gaze. Sonya is looking straight at you as if her life depends on what you're about to tell her. So, did you really see my Randolph? I did indeed, miss, in the queerest way imaginable. Yeah, because it is a dream. She looks perplexed but intrigued. Then if I'm to believe you, sir, you must provide some details about him. Uh, he has a narrow face, blue eyes, and wore a tweed jacket. Not blonde hair. Uh, not wide chin, thin lips, and wore a silk jacket, green bow tie, and a vest. Yeah, no, narrow face, blue eyes, and, uh, tweed jacket, I'm sure. No, that's not my Randolph. Your description is false, so if you'll excuse- Wait, what? Oh, no. Um... Hmm... Okay. It's a rude way- It's rude to interrupt a, uh, um, Lady Moreno. I guess he's still, uh, upset about that or whatever. That's fine. Uh... He didn't have blonde hair though, did he? He didn't have glasses, that's for sure. White chin, thin lips, and wore a silk jacket, green bow tie, and a vest. Well, yes, very accurate. He used to wear that for special occasions, just as he did to the journalist convention where we met. So strange, were you acquainted with him before? Never I'd seen the man in my life before I did in my dream. No, madam. Though I felt a vague affinity towards him, I wasn't, but the abstract realism of the vision almost seemed to suggest otherwise. That seems like an occult thing to say. Anxiously. So what was he doing, or where was he going? Did he tell you anything else apart from his name? He's about to enter an old abandoned house somewhere in Arkham. Told me that he sought inspiration, whatever that implies. He said something about covering a long way to eternity. Hmm, I think the old abandoned building is more like a metaphor. So, maybe he sought inspiration. Shudders and his eyes, and her eyes become teary. Just... Just like he wrote in his last letter. Oh, he's here. He must be alive then. How did he communicate with you? And why you instead of me? It all remains a mystery to me, Miss Carter. Some practitioners of the art are known to seep into other psyches. She seemed to be... She seems to be drowned in a sea of memories for a few short moments as she looks deep into the vagueness. 
Finally, a single tear of happiness trickles down her cheek. I'm Sonya H. Green Carter. Thank you for sharing me with this. Uh, this with me, Mr. Hmm. My name is Fabrosi McCortez. Nice meeting you as well, Sonya. Can you help me find him then? There must be a reason for Randolph to meet you. If I follow you, would you be kind enough to take me to that house? Uh... Shit. Yes, but I kind of have other things that I need to do right now. Ah, damn it. Alright, fine. I don't really want to leave her by herself, so... Of course, Sonya. I'll be glad to be of any assistance. Taken by a surprise. Oh, thank you, but I don't mean to derail you from your ob obligations, whatever they may be. Are you sure I won't be a drawback? Mmm... I feel like maybe we should come back to her later. Can I? Or is this going to botch the entire quest? Alright, I'm hoping that um, we can just come back to this later. On second thought, perhaps I should walk alone. Is that so? Well, I understand, but if you do find any further information related to my husband, please do notify me. I'll do my best, Mrs. Carter. Goodbye. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we can actually um, talk to her again and uh, maybe get her to join me. Sure. Okay, so let's head back to um, to the bank. Or head to the bank, since I've never actually been. And see if we can accomplish something today. Yeah. Alright, Outsider. Is that your... Is that actually just your name? <laughs> I guess we just call him Outsider then? Fair enough. How many rations do I have, by the way? I have... Three rations, so maybe we'll be alright for the time being. Okay. Let's head to the... Head to the Bank of Arkham. Oh! What's happening? Is he not wearing pants? Whoa! Fucking loony! Damn! Can I loot his body? His demented venture ended prematurely and pitifully. He didn't, he didn't seem to be aggressive, like he wasn't attacking anyone. Hmm... Alright, well let's head inside. I'm assuming we're about to enter our first Royal Rumble? What? The fucking... <laughs> bank, uh, truck just plowed right through the gate? That's hilarious. Vehicle is locked. I guess we'll need to find a key for it then. Oh, what's in that pile? What's in Gomer pile? Wad of dollars. Toothpicks. Or sorry, lockpicks. Can I use the... Lockpick on it by any chance? The hood of this armored vehicle was sto stove in when the driver smashed through the wall. By the looks of it, he suffered a painful death in the process. Yeah, no shit, right? Okay, there's another pile here and a couple of doors. Screws and a few SIGs. Let's check this one out. Hoping it's nothing too, too dangerous. I'm really hoping that we don't need Eduardo for this. Hmm. A lot of dollars, cloth scraps, and empty syringes. What's outside? The windows are shattered, just like the sanity of the bank's new residence. I see. Bank manager's note. Oh, what's that? Uh, let's read this. I've never been a man who puts any stock in superstition, yet my experience today has shaken my once strict convictions. I had an unannounced visitor. He was a tall man. Dressed in a... Um... Can't read that. Shit. Sorry, let me just... Do something here. Show documents as texts. Okay. Maybe that'll help it out, us out a little bit. There we go. He was a tall man dressed in a finely cut suit and top coat, All of an impenetrable black. So he was wearing Vanta black. And his uh, face. Well, peculiar as this may sound, I do not uh, remember a damn thing about it. Not his age, the look in his eyes, or the color of his hair. When I try to recall these details, my mind goes completely blank. Oh shit, it's the, um... It's the Dismal Man. I see. Interesting. Okay, okay. Uh... So there's nothing else right now. Alright. Then let's go deeper. 
<laughs> Giggity. Maybe a tussle? For once? Our first tussle? What the fuck? Why is there a dude just in there? That's bizarre. Another pile here. Broken chandelier. Oh, a wrench. I wonder if it's more powerful than what I have now. The lower... It does have a higher... Um, uh, minimum damage. But the handling is not that... Uh, not as good as my current dagger. So I guess we'll just keep the dagger as is. The shiny bits of crystal from this ruined chandelier glitter like stars against the filthy floor. Fantastic. Alright, well, um, let's actually end the episode off here for now. We'll come back tomorrow, and I guess we'll talk to this guy, I guess, who still thinks that the bank is operational. Maybe he was, like, the teller or something? Yeah. And I just consumed ration, which, of course, highlights the need for me to pause the game when I'm not doing anything. Alright, so for now, thanks for watching, and have a good breakfast!